Hi there, I'm where the refrigerator lives. Hey guys, good morning, or actually I think it's just past noon, so it would be afternoon. That would make it afternoon, yeah. <laughs> so today we are planning on working on our kitchen. So this is our kitchen cabinet that we are building. We started on it a few days ago. And um, so yeah, we're going to share the rest of um, building this with you. So basically what we have is a one by three framework um, with half inch plywood. Yeah, so as she said, we've been working on this. Um, I know it seems a little weird in like the linear YouTube time warp where, you know, we show you we're working on a project, but there's a lot of stuff that we're working on. And uh, yeah, this happens to be one of them. Since this is so big, whenever we get a chance to work on our bigger projects, uh, we try to hop over and do a little bit on that as well. Yeah. So um, kind of the current plan is, is this first area here is going to be where our stove top is with some drawers for like pots and pans and dishes below it. This section here is actually going to be our refrigerator, which we're excited about. Uh, the sink will go here in this little space. And then um, this is just going to be some more storage and stuff over here. Hi there, I'm where the refrigerator lives. This is going to be our compartment for our refrigerator. And we are going to need some ventilation. In a van, you have limited space, so you kind of have to get creative with ventilation. So we have little uh, vents that we're actually going to install with a two and a half inch uh, hole saw. And that way we can have, hopefully, create a nice area of ventilation. So the more ventilation you have, the, supposedly the less of a load that you'll have and the less electricity you'll consume with your refrigerator. Okay, so we've got the basic structure of this thing put together. So we are going to paint it. Um, we decided to go with a color called Blueprint. Um, it's a nice blue. It, it's almost, it's really similar to the van color, just like a little bit brighter, not as gray as the, um, the van is. So, but I think it's gonna look really good. So now that we've painted the cabinet, or mostly myself, I think, <laughs> um, we are going to let it dry and then we'll just check it out and make sure we don't need to do any touch-ups. But in the meantime, I think we're going to actually start on our backsplash that's going to go behind this. We are using a peel and stick backsplash, so we figure it'd probably just be a good idea to kind of put it in, it's really thin, to go ahead and just put it up there before we put this in so that we'll have a nice seamless um, edge where they kind of go together. So this is what we are going to be using for our backsplash. Um, there are some bohemian prints. We figure we have a lot of white in here, the blue bottom, and then the, um, the darker wood, so this will kind of brighten everything up a little bit for us. Um, they aren't real tile, they are peel and stick, so nice and thin, lightweight. Not gonna add a whole lot of weight, you know, cause at this point we start to get concerned a little bit about the weight of the van. We definitely don't wanna go over um, what we're allowed to have. Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to use. Hopefully they will look good. I mean, you can tell that they are um, like paper plastic, but when you put them up, they, they still look really good. So I, th I think um, I think it's going to work out. Super excited about this next thing. We have a countertop for our kitchen. Now, we didn't go with like butcher block or anything like crazy, but um, we were picking up some additional uh, plywood today and we saw this beautiful walnut plywood. It's what, three quarters? Yeah. Three quarter inch. So what we decided to do instead of having a really heavy butcher block or um, we would also looked at some laminated uh, pine that was like three quarter of an inch um, thick. FedEx guys here. Um, we decided to go with this. so. FedEx. The downside is um, there's a rough edge on plywood where you don't have like a rough edge on like the pine or the butcher block. So um, 
We're gonna have to veneer it and do all those kinds of fancy things, but we think it's a beautiful piece of wood for the countertop and we have no idea how this is going to turn yeah, out. Yeah, so it, it could be a total fail. <laughs> I wish I wish we had a dollar for every time we, we said that I'm not sure how this is going to turn out because we would have paid for our van, van build and yeah. by now. The positive side is this piece of wood was like $140. It's a little more expensive. It's um, walnut. It's walnut, so it's more expensive wood. But it's it's a 4 by 8 piece of wood, so not only is that going to give us enough wood to do our countertop for the kitchen top, it's also going to give us enough for our lagoon table that we're going to be making. And we are hoping to do like some flip-up counters um, as well, so we'll have enough wood for all of that. Uh, so it's actually a lot cheaper than the, it was like 260 bucks we were looking at just for the kitchen countertop portion, so... Mm -hmm. Um, and it's pretty lightweight too. And it's really lightweight compared to even some of the other plywoods we looked at. It was really lightweight. So fingers crossed it works out, but we're going to go for it. Yeah. <laughs> See how it turns out. Okay. So we have our holes in the top of this. So the next thing we have to do is put the veneer on the side so that it, it looks nice. So you can see I've already started putting the veneer on. You can see the raw edge here. And then this side is veneered. So I've gone ahead and put the two long sides on. And honestly, I wanted to practice a little bit before I <laughs> showed you guys. But now we're going to show you how we did it basically on the short edge here. So the first thing you have to do is um, you need some veneer. We've got walnut veneer to match the um, actual countertop. And then um, we just need a piece of it. And you want to go maybe about like an inch longer than... Uh, what the side of your um, wood is and then um, so we saw this guy show these little tricks and he says to just kind of line it up with the edge and then you kind of just push it down that's the best way to kind of break this stuff instead of using scissors or anything like that and then just kind of back and forth now we have the veneer with the 3m backing and not the glue yeah, so apparently there are three options. We thought, after watching videos, we thought you had to basically iron this stuff on. Um, so they, apparently they have one that you can actually put a sealant on the back and put it on. They have the stuff that you do. It has glue on it, and you heat it up and use an iron across it. But the place we went also had 3M stuff. They said it's relatively new for them. I don't know how long it's been out for you. Um, but basically, you just have 3M tape on the back of it. So instead of having to use the iron and everything, you just pull the tape off and then you know adhere it to the side okay so we're gonna put this piece on so when we watched videos it seemed like everybody kind of centers this over this and puts it on and then trims off both sides that seems kind of excessive to me um, maybe there's a reason they do it that way but I've had pretty good luck at just lining this up with the top edge and then only having to trim one side of it um, so that's what I'm going to continue to do but uh, for this, basically, um, you just pull the backing off and you're going to leave that little bit of hangover that we measured for um, earlier. And I just line it up with the top like this. Now, like I said, some people kind of center it over the entire board and then trim both sides. I like this and then I slightly sand it and it almost looks seamless. Okay. So um, I got the strip on and um, I kind of just make sure that it's down really good. Um, I've just been using my fingers and kind of going along it like this. I've seen people use rollers or blocks of wood. Um, important thing is just to make sure that you have good contact the entire way down the board. And then just like we did earlier um, to trim these down, what they suggest is that you just fold it over the edge like so. little edge okay and like I said to make sure that this is nice and smooth and seamless at the top I've just been taking 220 grit sandpaper and kind of smoothing out the edge a little bit here it's very important that you do not sand off of the table because then you're likely to pull off your veneer that you just put on so what I'm just doing is very lightly just enough to kind of smooth it out in towards the table And I think it does a really good job at kind of smoothing it out and evening it up. 
Okay, so now that this side is pretty much finished up, we have to actually flip it over to kind of trim the excess off of the bottom. So we'll do that. And you can, um, Jed will take a shot, but you can see that there's a little bit of excess sticking up here. So we watched a whole video on different ways that you can trim this off. Um, of course, you can use like an X-Acto type knife and trim it off. Um, I found that when I was trying to do that on my sample piece, I kept kind of gouging the wood. So I ended up not liking it. Um, there was a guy that we watched who had a really great idea and this is really efficient and fast. So he uses a square file. So it has to be square, it can't be rounded, it has to be square and flat like this. And what he does is he basically files it off. You have to be careful though because you can't do like a back and forth file motion. You can only go in one way and again just like with sanding you don't want to go off the table, you want to go onto the table that way you are not going to gouge your wood. Before you actually use this on your actual countertop, I'd suggest you practice on a sample piece like I did earlier. But basically what you do is you line it up with the edge here like this and you want to go in one direction only touching the wood. So you kind of go here and if you see that just starts to, to trim it back. Remember to always just one direction. Okay. And when you're doing it, kind of keep it at an angle and try not to keep it away from the table just a hair. That way you're not gouging this, especially if you're going to be able to see the underside of your table. Our countertop you're not going to be able to see, so if I mess up a little bit, it's not as big of a deal. But this is like so easy compared to the knife. Okay, and so just like the top, you want to sand it just to smooth out that edge. Again, only inwards. And I really don't do this much, just a little bit. Like this stuff is so thin and fragile, you really don't have to do much at all. I just kind of go across it twice. And it's done. Do that all the way around your table and it's, or your countertop and you're good. So Sandy's applying the second uh, coat of polyurethane. Is it polyurethane? Yeah. Okay, so polyurethane. Um, one of the thing, reasons why we went with polyurethane is because it's longer lasting. Um, it's really scratch and water resistant as well. There are other things on the market that you can use. Um, but the most important thing, no matter what you use, is be sure that it's food safe. Uh, surprisingly, polyurethane, once it's dry, is food safe. Time for coat number three. Yep, coat number three. And hopefully it'll look good when it's done. All right, guys, so our kitchen countertop is finished. We put three coats of the polyurethane. It's um, a gloss polyurethane on here, and it looks pretty good. It We can't really use it, and we shouldn't um, do too much with it. Um, they say for, like, after you let it dry for 24 hours, light use for one to three days, and then it can take, like, a total of a month or so for it to completely cure, so you need to kind of use it lightly in that period. Well, I wasn't planning on going full hibachi on the, on the probably, countertop in the next 72 yeah, hours we're not, anyway. We're not hitting the road in the next, probably in the next month. So um, it'll be fine. We have not permanently installed it on top of here yet. We still need to run, we're going to run some wiring along the back um, for our stove, which is going to be here. And then our sink, the sink requires no wiring um, over there. And then the refrigerator is going to be underneath here in the middle. Um, but yeah, we have to, we just realized we have to do our flooring first. So that'll be our next video coming out. Um, we had planned on doing the flooring very last, um, you know, to protect the flooring, not moving in and out of here and everything. But we did decide we need to put it underneath um, the, cabinet. the cabinet because we have an area that runs behind here but by the sliding door that uh, you can kind of see down behind. And if we didn't put something on the floor there, it would just... It would look unfinished. And it would look unfinished and you'd just see the plywood yeah. flooring. So we decided we'll do the flooring next. Um, but hey, this turned out better than I thought. Saved some money on um, doing the plywood. So, and we have enough wood to actually do our flip up table here on the end, which we plan on in the future. Yeah, and our lagoon table, which we're probably going to do with this. We'll probably put that in our flooring video. It'll probably be a flooring slash lagoon video coming up for you. Yeah. Um, so com Coming pretty soon. Yeah. So that's going to do it for this time. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, and until next time, stay wonderful. wonderful.